In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you 40 amazing hidden features and some cool tips and tricks I've learned and I'd like to share with you guys. So if you two also picked up an Apple Vision Pro, this is a complete guide of everything this thing can continue to do. Starting off with the environments. Did you know that some of these environments have unique features? Currently, some people on Reddit have discovered that this one, I'm not gonna bother pronouncing that, but if you actually yell super loud, you'll hear an echo. Hello. 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 You're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> then Yosemite also echoes. Echoes. And then for the environment Mount Hood. Right now we have no raindrops or rainfall whatsoever. But when you close all your apps. It begins to rain. And apparently there's more in other environments. We just have to find those Easter eggs. So if you know some of these, comment down below. Now the window capability, if you put these alongside the wall, this thing is super advanced to the point where they will stay there once you come back. But if you like to move all your windows down with you, resetting the home by long holding on a digital crown, this will bring all your windows back. But if you like to leave those windows where they're at, if you actually look at them through a wall like this and select the little bar, it'll quickly appear and come close to you. But now an issue that I personally have discovered is when you have too many windows open at once, unlike a computer, you really don't have access to like task manager or something like that to quickly force close all these apps. There's a way to do that. I'll show you that in a little bit, but instead of individually just closing each app, just allow Siri to do it for you and request Siri to close all the windows you have created. Close all the tabs. And then you could also move Siri around wherever you want her to dedicate it well whenever you want this or to have a dedicated spot on your screen you can totally adjust it anywhere now this is cool looking at the corner of an app allows you to open or adjust the size smaller or larger but did you know using two fingers by pinching and zooming you can also adjust it like this just note it's not going to let you stretch it out extremely but it will allow you to quickly have access to an adjustment tool by just doing this with your hands. Now, an important powerful tool on any device is understanding the adjusters, the button shortcuts, basically. So we're talking about the long hold to reset your home, but whenever you want to have quick access to your app library, instead of going in control center and selecting it here, you can always use your digital crown because a single tap will allow it to take you to your app library menu. And then a double tap will take you quickly to pass through mode, remove all your apps, taking you out of your environment to the pass through, allowing you to see what's around you real quick. And a single tap will take you back where you last left off. Now the left button is uh, kind of a, a weird one. It actually is a shutter button because when you tap on it, it will take you quickly to your camera app, which allows you to take 3D photos and videos. And if you're on the photo section, if you long hold, it will continuously just quickly start recording a video. And once you let go, it will stop. But here you have full freedom to have access to your photo library to see some of your photos that you previously taken. It's actually pretty cool. And to get out of this, just tap the digital crown once. Now by now, you may have already tried this out, but by looking up and rotating the digital crown, if you want to adjust the percentage of the environment you want, you would like to see, you could adjust it. But if you're trying to adjust the audio, look at the audio speaker and then adjust the digital crown. And this is how you could adjust the audio levels differently. But an additional cool tool we were given by Apple is also located in the control center column whenever this menu pops up. This download arrow will allow you to adjust the app volume individually in case you are on the call or something. Now, if there's an app that's ever acting funny or already happened to me a couple of times, you can force close the app. And to do this, all you need to do is just press and hold both the right and left button at the same time until you see a force shut app screen pop up. Select the app you like to force close and force close the app and there you go. Now, another cool thing about this is if you repeat the same process, but you continue long holding the two buttons and continue holding it even past the force close application menu, it will take you to the power off slider and you can slide it to turn it off, just like our iPhone basically and the iPads. So that's how you could properly turn off your Vision Pro without force powering it off by removing the battery bank. That's not really how you're supposed to turn this off. Not sure if that causes harm to the VR headset, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that or take that chance. But regardless, if you don't turn it off, it's not the end of the world because apparently if you leave it on standby, like placed down on a flat surface, inactive, 
Within 24 hours, this will automatically turn off. So you don't have to worry about anything. Now the FaceTime audio, if you're in your home, you don't have an environment open up or anything like that. You may find that the spatial audio will kick in because some of your guests that you're talking to, their voices will actually echo around the walls giving you the full illusion as if they were actually right there in front of you. I thought that was really interesting. Now I want to talk about travel mode. Now travel mode, a big mistake I've been noticing a couple people make is they're not turning it on. Some of my personal favorite content creators made this mistake too, where if their screen just moves. That's because you need to turn on travel mode. Very similar to like airplane mode, you'll find this right in control center. You need to enable this before your vehicle begins moving because if it's moving and you're trying to enable it, it can be a bit challenging to uh, select it. So if you're on a plane and the plane hasn't yet taken off, enable travel mode and airplane mode, and then all your windows should stay put. So that's how you could properly turn on travel mode. To get the best experience, you have to stay put and make sure that the headset is always in the same place when you enabled it. So if you look down, you may experience like tracking error messages, but if you look back up and give it a couple seconds, everything should reset. So this is not perfect. I kind of wish Apple made it so the headset could easily turn on or understand you're inside a moving vehicle automatically. So you don't have to do that. I feel like Apple could have done the marketing for this a little bit better because it looks like it does it all automatically. Now the control center, just like our iPhones, if you long hold on some of these icons, it'll quickly give you more options such as on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. If you long hold on the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi, it will quickly allow you to select those different devices right then and there instead of having to go into your device settings. And yes, you could plug in non-Apple devices like Bluetooth headphones to the Apple Vision Pro. You could pair it without any issues. And then more features that can be found that the iPhones have on the Apple Vision Pro that can be found in your iMessage. When texting or receiving text messages, if you long hold on some of the text messages, you could respond to some of these messages that will send to you like like dislike and etc now the app store is a powerful place to experiment with because i found some amazing apps one of which is the smart widget app i'll have this one linked in the description down below but this allows me to actually display the time on my vr headset instead of me having to actually launch the control center now let's go ahead and take the headset off and talk about the external features the battery bank this thing if you notice if you move it around an led will indicate showing you the battery life stats then in addition to that, this cable that's paired and tethered to the headset is removable. Not from the headset, but this portion right here. As this little pinhole can accept a SIN removal tool because when you push in it, it's spring loaded and will allow you to replace this wire in case your dog gets to it or something like that as an example. So you don't have to replace this $200 battery bank, you can just replace this cable. Just at the time making this video, this cable is not yet available to be purchased separately, but something tells me somewhere down the line, Maybe third party accessories will also have this cable available for us to purchase it. This happened on the MacBook Pros with MagSafe. When Apple reintroduced the MagSafe cable, it was until like eight months later when and that cable was able to be purchased separately. So something tells me Apple's gonna do the same here. And then another cool feature, which seems to get people confused, is uh, this supports plug and play. So just like the Quest 3, you could plug this in against a wall so it could draw power from the wall and you continue playing or using your VR headset. You can even use another external bank, but that's just too much, it's overkill. But yeah, it does support plug and play. And then the power adapter that came included was the Apple Vision is a 33 watt power adapter. But I found out after using my 100 watt power adapter that came with my MacBook Pro, the Apple Vision Pro does support fast charging. So if you'd like to charge this thing quicker, use one of those if you have one of those laying around from your MacBook. Now, since we were recently talking about pinholes, if you remove the light shield, these holes right here on both the left and right side are also pinholes that will accept the SIM removal tool, which will allow you to remove both the right or left side in case you're trying to store this in a more compact space, or you need to replace these if that becomes broken. So it's fairly modular. And here's an awesome hack. If you have an old school Quest 1 traveling case, the Apple Vision Pro actually fits in here perfectly. It's almost as if it was designed to fit in here. And there's also a unique storage compartment right here that allows you to have everything in place. If you wanna travel with a power bank or your power adapter, you have total freedom to do so. And in addition to that, this travel case is very premium feeling. It's hard, it's nice. And since this is an older model, I'm sure it's very inexpensive, a lot more affordable and obtainable than the official one from Apple. So if you're looking for a good travel case, I recommend looking into this one.
I have a link in the description as well. Now for the best comfortable experience, I really recommend just experimenting. Apple provides this solo loop band as well as the dual band. And based off all the reviews I've seen as well as feedback from friends and family that tried this, it seems like this one's the most comfortable, but personally for long durations, I do ex recommend experimenting with the dual one as it will actually evenly balance things a lot better than this one as most of the way it's also on your top of your head as well as on the back. So if you're planning on wearing this longer than two hours, experiment with the dual band. You may find that one more comfortable, but even the solo one is pretty cool. I really do like this quick adjustment knob that it has on the side. I've also seen people put it, this battery bank on the back portion and tighten it enough so it actually stays on your head, but I don't really recommend that. Now, sometimes when connecting your Mac to the Apple Vision can be buggy. Normally, a connection icon was supposed to be on top and will allow you to interact with it so you could quickly connect and have quick access to your monitor display like that. But if it's acting weird, you could override this. You need to go ahead and launch Control Center and then look for the Mac icon with the Vision goggle icon. And here, select it. Select the appropriate computer you want to connect to. And in a matter of seconds, a screen should pop up and just like that. Now, a cool trick is if you want to line it up, if you notice it's kind of uneven or under level, just move your head and that's an easy way to level everything right. And what I want to go ahead and show you next is if we launch like Safari as an example, and I'm going to go ahead and move it to this side and notice my mouse is in my Mac. If I then look at the screen, I can move my mouse from my computer to that app right there. And I can also copy and paste. For some reason it's not showing up here, but if I use my hands, I could copy and paste. So select the text and copy. And I could paste this on my computer or on another app if I had like the notes app over here uh, open as well. And if you're wondering how I'm able to screen record my voice in Control Center, in the record icon, if you long hold, this is where you can select a microphone. Now, if you have friends or family in the room and you like to show them what you're seeing in VR, you can also mirror this onto your supported TV or Apple TV. So everything that this display shows will be presented on the big screen. So friends and families can also see what you're seeing in VR. And yes, this does support iPads as well as iPhones. So this can be found in Control Center. But now let's say, for example, one of your friends want to try out the VR headset. This does have a guest mode, which I highly recommend enabling this because if you just pass the headset to that person without selecting guest mode, the eye tracking, the calibration is going to be off because it's made for you. But in guest mode, which you could find in Control Center, select guest mode right here. You have the freedom to select if you want them to have access to all the apps or other stuff like the mirroring capability. I personally prefer giving them access to all the apps so at least they can have a good general feel of the Apple Vision. But once you select it and hit done, as soon as you take off the headset, Within five minutes, as soon as the headset is put on, it's going to walk you through the calibration for them, as well as a quick guide on how to quickly begin using the Apple Vision. So that's how you could enable guest mode for others to try it. Now for number 30, if you already purchase like movies on Apple TV or you already have like a, a good library of movies right here, as you see right here, you could actually switch some of your already owned movies as long as they support it into 3D. That's right. These movies support 3D. Sometimes when you by selecting one, a little window will pop up letting you know if you want to watch it in 2D format or 3D. So Ant-Man unfortunately doesn't let me. But you can select 3Ds right here and you'll be able to see which one supports 3D and which one doesn't. So this is nice that they gave us a free little upgrade on some of these movies that support 3D. So you can really utilize the micro OLED displays that this has and oh my god, the movie viewing experience in this is fantastic. I was quite surprised finding out that Apple is allowing us to upgrade our movies for free. Now if you're a subscriber to Apple Music, whenever you select a music, if you tap this little icon right here of the music album, you can minimize that window so you have music control very similar to like quick access to media control on like your Apple Watch or iPhone. Now I've already did a couple of shorts while wearing this and a pro tip is to enable the one hand tracking capability because you see i was recently doing a couple of shorts the other day testing and experimenting with the apple vision and so many actions i was doing was toggling things from the windows i had open like pausing and playing my music or videos when i just wanted to play in the background as i was continuing doing chores so if you like to disable this and have it so it can only track one hand it's very straightforward as you'll see it right here in settings go into eyes and hands hand input, 
select the hand you want to do the tracking. So in our case, left hand. And now I just need my left hand each time to do anything in the screen. Now you may have noticed that I have like a little pointer. I just enabled this personally to make this video easier for you guys to see, but I have discovered that this does allow me to understand on what I'm selecting a lot better than having this off. So if you like to turn this on, super easy and this is how you do that. You'll see it in accessibility. Scroll down to interaction and look for a pointer control. Enable it and here you have the frame to customize it if you want to change colors as well as the pointer size if you want to increase it or decrease it. Then if you want to switch it from eye control to something else, you do have the capability to swap it with head. So right now this is now being controlled with my head and I just have to hit confirm to confirm that but there's also waist and index finger. I recommend experimenting. If you don't like it tracking your eyes, you can always just swap it ahead though. I did find this one pretty helpful. And then this indicator, if you want to raise it up higher, you will be able to find it over here in control center and where it says indicator position this is where you could increase the height if you want it to be much higher i'm assuming this is only useful if you're like seven foot tall or something like that but you can see how it goes when you're adjusting it but default's good enough for me then you may have noticed that my control center may have more icons than yours the most useful ones i find is the text on demand because by tapping here it allows me to automatically change the text size regardless on what app I'm using on demand. So if something just looks too small, that's where I go in and change the size. But of course you have your sound recognition as well. By enabling this, this allows the VR headset to notify you whenever it hears like a fire alarm, a siren, a cat, or even like your doorbell. So if you're in VR and someone rings your doorbell, your VR headset will hear that and notify you that somebody just rang your doorbell. And then another thing I almost failed to mention is the freedom to interact with your apps. So here's my hand. I'm actually going to get closer to it and I can move my apps like this and literally interact with you guys and showing you more about certain things. And in, in people awareness right here, by having this on, if somebody would to walk by in my immersive environment, they, their shadow outline will appear, allowing me to see them so I don't bump into them. And same applies if I get too close to an object, as you're seeing right here. So here I have the capability to allow it to show people, of course that's on, and I could allow it to them to be shown in my environment, or in my apps, or everything. This is personal preference experiment, but one thing I do want to cover is the eyesight. Most people don't like people being able to see your eyeballs. If you like to do that, you could just delete it here and hit delete. Even though it says it will delete your persona, but if we go in our persona section, right here, wait for the buffer, my persona is still there and I'm still able to use it on FaceTime calls. So I'm not sure what exactly they mean by this. And there you guys have it. Those are my favorite tips and tricks as well as some hidden features that the Apple Vision can deliver. If you learned something new, make sure to hit that like button and let me know that you actually did enjoy this video as well as get subscribed for more tech videos just like this. I do have more videos coming out for the Apple Vision. The next one is revolving around the best apps I will recommend for all. But if I missed some hidden features or you have some hidden features of your own, feel free to comment down below for the rest of us to also check out. Now, if you'd like to watch more, maybe you want to see a comparison video between the Quest 3 and the Apple Vision Pro, I have it right over there. You guys can go ahead and watch. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.